fellow YouTubers, Cable Craig, Deadpool Toys with 2, here to bring you a review on the Star Wars Elite Series First Order Flame Trooper from the Disney Store. This is the front of the box. As you can see, it's a window box view. You can see the Storm Trooper, Star Wars Elite Series First Order Flame Trooper. On this side, you can see it says from the new film, Star Wars The Force Awakens Diecast Action Figure. See the side of the Flame Trooper, and at the bottom it says Star Wars Elite Series. And on the other side, it says the same exact thing, Diecast Action Figure, Elite Series. And on the back here it says Star Wars Elite Series. We've read that already. It says First Order Flame Troopers, Specialized Storm Troopers of the First Order Flame Troopers carry incendiary, 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 whatever. Weapons that can transform any battlefield into an internal blaze. Let's look at the box and now let's look at the actual figure and accessories. Oh my god, so much zippy ties. Alright, and here he's out of the box. I'm not going to lie you guys, this Flame Trooper is heavy. This might be the heaviest diecast elite series one i got so far i guess it's because of the backpack but he's really heavy when i say heavy he's top heavy i'm really glad that it does come with this stand here that says star wars most likely i would use it like it wasn't hard to get him to stand like black series from marvel legend stand but it still took a minute for me to get him so as you can see he does have that glossy white look i do like how that looks and with the stand let me see yep with the stand he stands no problem like, it's really easy, but it's really easy for him to fall over because there's so much weight in it. But now we're going to look at the accessories right quick that he comes with. Now on his really cool gun was well, flamethrower. As you can see, it's a little bent. I have noticed that in a lot of reviews for some reason that it's a little sluggish there, but whatever. I'm not going to actually take his gun out because it has the little lines there, the little see-through bands around to keep it in his hand. So I'm actually going to keep that how it is because this is more of a display. But as you can see here on the gun, it's just where they pretty much put in a lot of black in there. And then, like, I'm not seeing that much detail, though. It just looks like they use... I wish they would have used probably a more glossier white, though, because that looks a little pasty. But it doesn't look that bad. They did put a little few silver circles in there. Here at the bottom, it's not looking too sloppy. You're not seeing that much, like, bleeding. It's really okay. It's just the only thing is that from the top, it's just a little sluggish. But past that, it looks really cool. For that, I almost forgot how they did the hands. I do love how, like, the palm of the hand is white and the outside is black. This actually doesn't look sloppy at all. So they did an awesome job on that. And also, you can see little designs on the arms, but not that much. And the shoulder pads are attached to the arm where it doesn't hinder the articulation, too. It's pretty cool. Here on the back, it doesn't look sloppy at all. This huge tank here for the flamethrower looks very good. And this is complete metal, too. You see here, I even have a little chip there. So it is a little chip there, but it doesn't look that bad. But I do love how that came out. It even says Disney and Lucas made in China. Lucas has to be on everything. Here at the bottom, that is made out of metal too. So it looks like the paint might wasn't dry yet or something there. But it still looks very good. All this is top heavy and all this is die cast metal. And that probably could be why. You can even see a small screw hole there where the neck is. But it came out very good. I do like the red dot. I do like they have the little antenna that sticks out. And those black dots, they don't look messy to me. They actually look very good, whoever did that. And the lining around the bottom of the, uh, I wanted to say jet jetpack, but of the flame backpack looks really cool too. You can see here, this line here, it looks like it goes from white to metal. And then it goes back to black. And then it goes up around to it. Let me turn it around. Very much better. So as you can see, that line that I said that was silver, it goes up here. And are these just kind of spread? Yeah, those aren't connected to anything. But they have those there. And then you have this huge pole. Not pole, but um, what be the right word? A cord that goes to the flamethrower for him to shoot it. It does have a different design from the first order flame trooper as you can see on this one on the flame trooper like he was completely covered but it looked like he had kind of a chest piece this piece actually goes and covers the stomach too here so that's a little bit of a different design here you can see they even like painted in here but i guess the paint didn't stick because you see you can see some silver is going through there a little bit it kind of looks like since they used the glossy painter they put on too many coats and it looks like it's like glistening from how much they put on there but i do still like how that looks now, as we go down here around the legs, <clears throat> it doesn't look that bad, but as you can see right there, the paint looks a little messy, and it looks messy all the way around. So I'm guessing, like, they put the black on after, and it wasn't reacting to the glossy paint that well. Even here on the side, you see how it's kind of sloppy there? I don't know if they used a the paintbrush or how that was done, but it looks a little weird. And as we go down, the paint is... Looks like it wants to bleed a little bit onto the white around the shins, but hey, it doesn't look that bad to me still. And as you can see here at the bottom, it is still where the black looks like it was trying to run onto the gloss paint. It's like little things that I just catch on to. You see how even the legs are different? One has a lump and two black dots and the other one doesn't. So when I rewatch the movie tonight, I'm going to see if I see that difference. It also has this cool little pouch on the side that's just a solid white, but it's not done in the same glossy color here. 
as the rest of him as you can see it's kind of done in like kind of the pasty white i guess you could say now once again on the back they do have the screw holes and my solution is that y'all can have the screw holes but as you can see this one that's like a screw hole there but it's black they might be better off if they just use black for all the screw holes instead of silver because it stands out but hey it's cool to me i actually i'm kind of used to them now and most likely i'll be able to get the elite series of any figure before the black series i still can't find captain phasma who was Boba Fett in? But anyway, it does look very nice. It's a very nice figure. And I do like how it came out. So it's perfect. It will look great as a display item too. Quick look at the figure. Now we're going to look at the articulation. Now you guys, it's still really ridiculous how much weight this thing has. But I love it. And I'm not going to be able to do too much uh, review on the articulation in the arms. Because I really want him to hold on to it. That's a perfect stance for him. And I'm not going to take off that rubber. Not rubber, but see-through band. But anyway, as you can see here <clears throat> in the legs... He can move it up and down only a little bit. There is no type of pivot there, but it can only go up that much. He can bend the leg pretty much at a right angle, but it's not double jointed. Here, as you can see, his actual legs can spread out really far. So they did, they gave a lot of articulation in the thighs, especially with this ball joint. There's no type of thigh twist for real there. And here at the torso, he can twist from side to side, which is pretty cool. So, but it can only go about that far. There's no type of ab crunch. All this is complete metal, all metal. His cool little backpack for the flame light thrower or pack, whatever it's called, is solid and it's attached. You can't take it off. His head can actually look, well, it already looks like it's looking down a little bit, but it can look up a little bit too. So side to side, and that's pretty much it. And there's a little bit of a pivot there. Now his arms actually, here, oh, I, I I was about to say, is it when you move this arm and that arm moves, but it's because it's attached to the gun. But the arms can, they don't look like they can go up that high. They actually stop where the shoulder pads are. So no further than that, but they can go up and down. So they go a, a good bit. And also it does look like you can bend here at the, you can bend here at the elbow. So you can bend there, which is really cool. And here at the wrist, it can twist. Can it pop? Let me see. Not that much of a pop, so only a little bit of a pop. So that is pretty much the articulation on this cool little figure. And here's a little bit of a size comparison. That's the new Halo 5 from the Guardians. So you see the size, it is towering over him pretty much. So yeah, they are not even close to the same size. But yeah, fellow YouTubers, this has been a review of the Star Wars Elite Series Flame Trooper. I do like it. First order Flame Trooper. I do like it. I'm glad it came out. I love the glossy look. Any light that comes around it reflects straight off of it. And I hope you guys will pick it up if you like it too, just like you like the movie. But yeah, this has been a review by Caleb Craig, Depot Toys 1-2. I'll see you on future videos. Bye. Billy, put my action figure down. That's it, I'm getting my lightsaber.